again. Namaskar. I am Dr. Rajat Mitra, a psychologist, and uh, I am going to share with you something that's uh, very dear to me. It's a very important topic which I believe for ourselves as a society, as a nation, and uh, that is the concept of memory loss. To give you my background, I'm a psychologist. I specialize in grief, grief therapist. Grief is uh, what we uh, call in Hindi uh, shok. And I, uh, I do grief work with people. I um, work with grief work with societies. And uh, I deal with, I often find that grief is something that has been there for decades, for centuries before it erupts, whether individually or uh, as a collective, as a society. Our society has been a society under grief. We have suffered a lot of grief in our lives as a society, whether it was the partition, whether it has been the riots, whether it's been centuries of slavery, whether it has been the uh, uh, invasions and the destruction of our civilization. There have been <coughs> many griefs in our lives and uh, all those griefs have given rise to trauma. All these griefs have given rise to a sense of uh, hopelessness and despair from which our society is emerging now. And uh, memory laws can help us emerge from that state it can help us to leave behind that past and start once again. And today will be my attempt to share with you about memory laws and why they are important for us. So let me uh, uh, you know, talk about memory laws from the very beginning. We all understand memory. We all understand it as something that we store inside ourselves, the recording of an event. Something happens in the past, we never forget it. We never erase it from ourselves. So many of them, they just pass away in the course of time. But many others, whether individually or collectively, they stay within us and uh, they refuse to leave us. And there are some memories which erupt after a long, long time, maybe after 30 years, 40 years. Maybe there are memories which uh, erupt after 100 years. The more deeper the trauma, the greater the time for the memory to emerge, the greater the time for the memory to come out. And this is a phenomenon that is just not peculiar to India or particular to India. It is particular to the rest of the world as such. And today will be my attempt to share that how memory laws are something that we as a society, we need to start thinking about ourselves, our country. Right? So it is not something that we don't think about. It is something that we think about perhaps in uh, very informal ways. But we need to start think of it in ways that uh, we have not probably thought about it so far before in a more formalized, organized, and in a more professional and uh, legal way so that the atrocities, the traumas that our society has gone through is never repeated again. Memory laws are, first of all, let me say, are a recent phenomena. They haven't been there for a very long time. <coughs> They have only started coming about in the last 25, 30 years. And uh, they have brought in themselves profound changes in the countries which have adopted them. We will be talking about that. And also the profound changes that they can bring in our country if we as a society start thinking of that. So first of all, let me say this, that Many historians are not comfortable with memory laws. Memory laws 
are to do with history memory loss are to do with a nation's past a past that the uh, people in power have tried to deny have tried to erase right the memory loss they provide us in with the problem <coughs> with the problem of historical consciousness the memory loss help people to become conscious of their history and begin to challenge the misinterpretation distortion of history by those in power by the historians who have tried to do that and it is and it is important to know that in our country too that there is no dearth of such people i first heard of memory laws as the gesot act in france that legalized holocaust denial in the late 1990s right so what are memory laws memory laws as a term were first coined in france in around 2 around uh, year 2000 to refer to legislation that uh, penalizes holocaust negationism or it uh, at the same time recognizes that certain events are crimes against humanity and cannot be denied <coughs> the invention of a new term itself shows that it was a novelty and uh, could not be destroyed uh, could not be described within the existing legal framework so it was something which was completely new and a new interpretation had to be made in order to incorporate that in the present legal structure of the country now to uh, even though it uh, is a recent phenomena let me say this that today there are nearly 30 countries where where uh, memory laws exist and they have adopted memory laws for various reasons some of which are very important uh memory laws jo hai wo isliye bahut zaruri hai important hai kyunki wo aaj vishwa ke pichle तीस पच तीस पैंतीस सालों में उनका उभरना हुआ है और ये देखा गया है कि जहाँ पे मेमोरी लॉस का इंट्रोडक्शन हुआ है और जहाँ पे जिन देशों ने मेमोरी लॉस को इंट्रोड्यूस किया है उनको उससे बहुत ही जो है एक बेनिफिट्स मिले हैं एक सुविधाएं मिली हैं और उनके जो राष्ट्रीय सम्मान को उनके जो राष्ट्रीय उनकी एक धारणा है उसको एक बहुत <coughs> जो है आगे प्रोत्साहन मिला है जो मैं समझता हूँ कि हमारे भारत में भी जो है उस तरह की सोच उस तरह का विश्लेषण और उस तरह का जो है एक फिलोसॉफी हमें लाने की ज़रूरत है क्योंकि भारत में भी जो है इसका एक बहुत बड़ा महत्वपूर्ण रोल है राइट तो मेमोरी लॉस से हम क्या समझते हैं मेमोरी लॉस सिंपली मीन द लॉज रिलेटेड टू मेमोरी यानी कि वो याद वो लॉज जो हमारे यादों के साथ जो हमारे एक कलेक्टिव यादों के साथ इंडिविजुअल यादों के साथ नहीं जो है वो जुड़ा हुआ है राइट जो द लॉज मैं इंग्लिश और हिंदी दोनों में बोलूँगा क्योंकि मेरी सोच जो है वो थोड़ी सी इंग्लिश में भी है और उसका मैं ट्रांसलेशन भी जो है हिंदी में करता रहूँगा तो the laws which regulate historical memory or simply laws on memory they are called memory laws right ek udaharan lete hain aap germany mein aap ye nahi keh sakte ki jo hai holocaust jews ka ya 6 million jews were not killed agar aap kisi public platform pe aisa kehte hain to uske liye jo hai aapke aapke paas saza hai Uh, आपको सज़ा दी जाएगी दो से पाँच साल तक वो डिपेंड करता है कि आप किस विषय से इसको बोलते हैं यूरोप के बहुत देशों में आप ये नहीं कह सकते कि जूस की हत्या नहीं हुई थी वहाँ से मेमोरी लॉज की शुरुआत हुई राइट सबसे पहले जो है फ्रांस में मेमोरी लॉज जो है सामने आए और फ्रांस ने जो है ये गेसट एक्ट जो है इसको थ्रू ये लाया 
और उन्होंने कहा कि जो है तीन चीज़ों को आप डिनाई नहीं कर सकते डिनाई का मतलब होता है कि आप उसको मना नहीं कर सकते आप किसी पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म पे ये नहीं कह सकते कि ऐसा हुआ नहीं था या इस चीज़ को ये चीज़ अगर हुआ था तो ये जस्टिफाइड था राइट जैसे आर्मीनियन जेनोसाइड वी ऑल नो कि आज से सौ साल पहले इन अराउंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज वन एंड हाफ मिलियन पीपल वेर किल्ड इन टर्की एंड द गवर्नमेंट वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट तो यूरोप के देशों में एक्सेप्ट टर्की आप इसको डिनाई नहीं कर सकते कि ऐसा जो है वो कभी नहीं हुआ था और या आप उसका जो है पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म में जस्टिफिकेशन दे सकते हैं हाँ ठीक है अगर हुआ था इट मे हैव हैपन्ड बट दोज पीपल वेर ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट सो द डिनाइल द जस्टिफिकेशन इज बैंड बाय लॉ राइट बट द थिंग इज दैट वॉज इट ईजी क्या ये आसान था ऐसा करना नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं इसके लिए एक बहुत स्ट्रगल जो है करनी पड़ी और इसके लिए जो है काफ़ी संघर्ष करना पड़ा तभी जो है ये लॉज तभी जो है ये लॉज जो है देश में जो है वो आ पाए राइट क्या हमारे देश में भी जो है इन चीज़ों की ज़रूरत है क्या हमारे देश में भी इस तरह का कानून लगाना इस तरह का कानून बनाना ज़रूरी है मैं इसके बारे में जो मुझे इस वक्त सुन रहे हैं या जो सुनेंगे मैं जो है उनसे इस बारे में सोचने के लिए मैं उनको आग्रह करता हूँ आई आस्क पीपल टू थिंक अबाउट इट राइट इन वन फोरम विच आई वॉज अटेंडिंग अ प्रोफेसर हु वॉज माई को पैनलिस्ट सेड दैट देर वॉज नो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बाई आज़ाद हिंद फौज टू द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल ऑफ इंडिया when i told him that almost 26000 people had died that it was an army that came and attacked and it created fear and terror in the minds of british he was not willing to accept but on a public platform he kept on arguing he said that all that is absolutely rubbish which is not true and uh, it never happened it is exaggerated now the thing is that this person would not look at the evidence this person would not look at the feelings of many people in the audience many of whom had relatives uh, who died in that struggle of azad hind fauj their grandfathers their uncles uh, they had passed away he was least bothered about their feelings he said no it is not true right can we really do that right in a similar situation when uh, i was uh, another again a part of the pa- uh, a panel right somebody sa- someone said a very horrific thing he said that the 1984 riots which happened in delhi which were created the six they deserved it they were celebrating the assassination of mrs gandhi and so therefore what happened in that process was very much justifiable i was shocked right but then when i went back home and when i thought about it i said where do these people get this kind of uh, you know blatant uh, uh, usage to state such things and without any remorse of guilt without any remorse that they may be saying something which is deeply hurtful and it is so much uh, a negationism i realized that that is so because there is no law prohibiting in our country from uh, two people from saying such things right now why it is important for a society to create such laws which prohibits people from denying mass crimes from denying historical truths why did these uh, 30 countries which have memory loss today why did they uh, uh in uh, why did they do so much struggle to uh, put those laws they did it for a very simple reason that the denial of a crime is also a major crime that if you uh, that if we use denial it is dangerous and we don't have to wait till denial reaches a point where a trauma becomes real and denial today is recognized in psychology as perhaps the biggest factor that leads to and contributes to genocide that contributes to mass killing that contributes to racism and slavery we must stop that we must uh, 
you know, we must see that it is not only the intellectual opinion of a country, but the people also uh, come forward to say that, okay, we will not allow in our society such blatant misrepresentation or blatant uh, untruths to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, not be challenged, right? So it is important that when in our country we have gone through so many traumas and tragedies, right? We need to keep in mind that there is a mass section of people which are trying to deny it. And we need to know that whenever intellectuals, historians who are opposed to that, who get in power, their first attempt is to deny that such a thing ever happened. Their goal is not uh, the going for truth, the discovery of truth, but uh, to simply go ahead and deny this so that it does not happen, right? Now, let us ask ourselves that what happened uh, that memory loss came about? Now, before memory loss came about in Germany, things were, and after the second, I'm talking after the Second World War, it was natural for a section of people to go ahead and say that Hitler was right to exterminate the Jews. People could say that and get away. And it affected not only the sensitivity of the people who were killed, the six million people who were killed, not only them, but also gypsies, but also the homosexuals, the gays, all innocent people who were killed, uh, they felt that it is going to take the shape of a mass movement, that there is a powerful section, a lobby, which would like to erase it. For those of you who are interested, I uh, request you to study the works of David Irving, a prominent historian who said that there were no gas chambers. Now, it's very interesting and it's very also poignant that uh, many academics, many professors took the position that if someone says that there were no gas chambers, this is an academic position that can't be outlawed. They felt that uh, this is an academic position that must be uh, protected under freedom of speech, right? Now, the thing is that in that process, not only you are giving a chance for denial to come up, but also the chance for the justification of such uh, inhuman acts and crimes that have taken place, right? Now, should not a society think about the fact that there have been such mass traumas, there have been such genocides in our country, there have been attempts to exterminate us. And if people go on saying that, what happens to it? Should people be allowed to do that uh, when, in, when there is uh, overwhelming evidence that nothing like that ever took place, right? How should we look at the issue that when we are digging the Ayodhya temple today, uh, uh, you know, sorry, the Babri Masjid that was destroyed, below that are pillars and signs that there existed a temple today. So if we, if we keep on denying the fact that there was no temple over there, right, isn't it a travesty of truth? And if, uh, you know, for all these years when we have heard that, you know, there was, uh, you know, hardly any temples destroyed or any universities destroyed or books were, you know, not, you know, burnt and libraries were not burnt, right? Is it, isn't it important that we look at it from a, also from a legal point of view, apart from just defending it at an intellectual level? It's important to do so because only when we bring it to a legal level will we be able to convert the society and point out that, uh, you know, this should not be allowed to happen. This should not be allowed to take place, right? Now, what do memory laws do when they come up in a society? Have they been harmful? On the contrary, no. In Germany, memory laws have brought in a deep sense of, uh, uh, suff deep sense of relief from suffering of guilt of pain, of trauma for the Germans. In, in Israel, the uh, memory laws have given Jews a new sense of identity, 
a new sense of nationalism that uh, when Jews say never again, they do so keeping in mind that there are memory laws which uh, tell people that they cannot get away by saying that there was no Holocaust, that Hitler was right in exterminating the Jews, that uh, historians who try to take a line such as David Irving, that, you know, all these uh, things about, uh, uh, the, you know, the gas chambers and all the mass killings, they're highly exaggerated reports. Such people are stopped in their tracks from going ahead and doing so. In fact, it has been noticed that after the memory laws were brought about, such, uh, uh, such reports, such uh, uh, you know, exaggerations by people, it just stopped immediately after that. It came down drastically. People stopped doing that. And uh, it brought in the society a new awareness that we will not allow such a thing ever to take place in our country. So it gives rise to a new consciousness, a new level of identity and strength for the people, right? Now, I would like to draw attention of everyone, aap sabka attention mein is pe draw karna chata hu, ki that today in India, we are also going through a similar phase. Hum bhi ek aise similar phase se guzar rahe hai. हम अपने हिस्ट्री के बारे में हम अपने पास्ट के बारे में शायद इतना कॉन्शियस हुए हैं जितना हम पहले जो है कभी नहीं थे राइट right? कुछ दिन पहले जो है मैं पढ़ रहा था इट वाज रिटन दैट आरएसएस किल्ड महात्मा गांधी सम अ वेरी प्रोमिनेंट पर्सन सेड दैट राइट नाउ दैट लेफ्ट मी थिंकिंग कैन वी गो हेड एंड कीप ऑन डूइंग दैट अगेन एंड अगेन can we go ahead and deny things in our country which are not true? Can we go ahead and tell such lies again and again and fear no consequences? Because if there are no consequences of uh, telling such blatant uh, uh, lies and feeling that I will get away with it, this section of people who are doing so, saying that, for example, the RSS uh, killed Mahatma Gandhi or the fact that somebody who said that the Azad Hind Forge uh, did not contribute to the freedom struggle, right? They are also something that affect us. They hurt us. They are painful. They are traumatic to hear for the thousands and thousands of people who gave their lives, for the future generations who would like to know that what really happened. How can we ensure that uh, we make it uh, safe for them, we make a safe structure for them if we don't create laws so that it scares those people into telling such blatant truths, whether for political reasons or social reasons, right? Yes, uh, somebody was saying that there was no India before the British and we a group of villagers fighting with each other, right? Colonialism placed blatant lies on us our history, our laws were not on, you know, our own. They did not arise from our own consciousness, but they were imposed upon us. And today in India, if you can say blatant lies in the name of, uh, you know, which, were, which have been taught to us, you get away with it so easily. Not only you get away, you perpetuate it for the next generation. And that is what has happened in the last 70 years of our, uh, after, uh, you know, after the British left, that so many things have been passed off as truth, which should not be allowed to pass uh, anymore, at least uh, you know, for the future generation, for the next generation, right? So it is important that if we have to create a new national identity, then we need to know that uh, we must uh, start by creating laws called memory laws, which protect our civilization and the lies that have been spread about uh, people telling us in universities, in schools, about how things have been uh, distorted and how things have been made untrue, right? Now, I must say this, that as a psychologist, I see 21st century as a century of memory. It's the age of memory. The age of ideologies or main ideologies has come to slowly come to an end. 
whether it is communism or Marxism or whether uh, n number of ideologies. What is taking place today is an uh, age of memory. Uh, the jo yadasht hai, hamari jo uh, collective uh, yadasht hai, jiske sahare jo hai, jo humse mitai nahi gayi hai. Agar <coughs> 500 साल बाद जो है हम राम मंदिर 500 साल तक हम राम मंदिर के लिए लड़ सकते हैं और वो यादाश जो है हमारी मिटती नहीं है उसके ऊपर जो है हम आज अपना भव्य जो है राम मंदिर बनाने जा रहे हैं सो इट मींस दैट टुडे बाय सम फोर्सेस मेमोरी इज अगेन इमर्जिंग फॉर इंडिया इट्स इमर्जिंग फॉर आवर कंट्री मेमोरी तब इमर्ज होती है जब हमें दो चीजों का पता चलता है एक तो दैट वी हैव बीन बिट्रेड दैट आवर द हिस्ट्री वी हैव बीन टोल्ड द इंफॉर्मेशन वी हैव बीन गिवन दे ऑल हैव बीन यू नो दे आर ऑल अंडर अ फॉल्स नैरेटिव दैट हैज बीन फेड टू अस एंड टुडे वी रियलाइज दैट इन इंडिया सो व्हाट वी सी इज दैट uh the memory that we carry within ourselves is directly in conflict with the history which has been taught to us the memory is in conflict with history and the memory is always more powerful than history let us remember that nobody can erase the memory from within us the memory of kashmiri pandits which has been tried to be erased today you can get away by saying that uh, you know kashmiri pandits they left home voluntarily and uh, somebody called mr jagmohan made it sure so that he could do it uh, you know uh, take uh, his uh, revenge on uh, the people over there all sorts of untruths right half a million kashmiri hindus who ran away their story has been negated down for the last 30 years and if we don't make it into a law right now that uh, their uh, uh running away was something forced that in fact kashmiri uh, muslims over there they came out and celebrated when they left that actual history that happened right until and unless we make it sure through law that such things cannot be done we cannot be sure that this thing will not be repeated again so the major task of memory laws is to see that it does not happen again and therefore uh, i would say this that uh, they not only uh, stop from an incorrect interpretation of event which are tragic but they also stop us from uh, defining and carrying on with those tragic events and a culture of that and uh, tell us that the alternate uh, tr- the truth can emerge and uh, you know as we are becoming a nation of survivors we have a duty towards that truth and to make that truth structural and to make that truth uh, something legal so that we all start following that and that refers to i would say the universal values uh memory laws uh, they are to do with universal values of mankind right now one of the arguments which uh, i was talking about why memory laws are important and uh, this person he's a professor he stopped and said but you know uh, what you are talking about will stop our freedom of speech it will take away the freedom of speech wo hamari freedom of speech ko le lenge so i asked the professor that is uh, uh, tell me something is freedom of speech only based upon open discussion and only that leads to truth doesn't it mean that when something is a narrative or story of a people we need to make it legal so that it cannot be denied distorted and changed kya wo truth nahi hai isn't that a truth he became quiet i said आपका कहने का मतलब है कि सिर्फ ओपन डिस्कशन से लाउड डिबेट से ही जो है ट्रुथ जो है बाहर आता है और अगर हम लॉ बनाएं जिससे हम जो चीज़ें गलत हुई हैं उनका जो है किसी का डिनाई करना हम बहिष्कार कर दें हम कहें कि ये गलत है और ऐसा आप नहीं कर सकते राइट सो 
isn't that a reality too? So he was quiet. He said, no, you are absolutely, you know, you have a point over there. And then I asked him one thing, that who deny hain, those who denied uh, the bringing in of memory laws, unka motive kya tha? Ya hamare desh mein jo log isko deny karte hain, jinko hum, jo log humko kehte hain, ki aisa nahi karna chahiye humko, to humko jo hai uske baare mein kya logic, kya wo karna chahiye. So I said, what is important is that the deniers are not going to be able to debate this debate. Their goal is not going to be able to debate this debate. The arguments are not going to be able to go ahead and discuss that. But their goal is just to see that the ideology which they propound it keeps on and it does not change. It does not, uh, you know, uh, you know it remains uh, you know you know static right so uh, what is the most dangerous tool as i talked about the most dangerous tool today is denial right we have li- we as a society we have lived under denial for a long time and it is time that we go ahead and uh, you know uh, try to change it now uh, another person to whom i was talking about it he said that is it uh, really you know important that shouldn't it be left to only historians now as a psychologist i find something very interesting in every country history is seen as something as a discipline that needs to be revised that needs to be changed from time to time right and the change in history is brought about by lay people it is not brought by rival historians. Historians capture power. They tell the people in power that you have to do this, you have to write this, and you have to do this, and you have to this is the way you have to go ahead. And it is not an alternate uh, his, uh, you know, historians who come forward to repudiate that, because the alternate history has already been destroyed by these people. It is the common people. It is the common people and their reservoir of memory, unke andar jo memory, unke andar jo wo jama hua hai, they come forward and say, lekin ye jo history hai, ye hamari memory ke saath tally nahi karti hai. And in fact, when you preach this mem- uh, history, it's also deeply painful for us. So memory laws protect a society, they lead to closure, they lead to healing, and they, and they see to it that it is not something that is, uh, you know, uh, repeated again. So therefore, it is important to know that those who speak against memory laws, giving that, you know, it will violate freedom of speech, actually are not talking about violation of freedom of speech, but they are more talking about preservation of a certain ideology. And if you ask them that, well, what about human dignity? What about the fact that so many people suffered, lost their lives, so much untruth was imposed upon a society, they have no answer, they just become quiet, right? So I would like to now end uh, by saying a few things. One is that uh, memory laws may be a new topic for India, but its time has come. And uh, memory laws encapsulate the history of hundreds of years and brings it in front of us. It tells the people, those who want to distort, uh, change, make lies about the past, that it cannot be done so anymore. So if memory loss are brought about in India, and I'm sure that it will take a lot of struggle, it will take a lot of debates, it will take a lot of discussions to do so, it will stop many things. It will stop the... It will make us more in connect in a connection with our roots, with our history. And for example, it will be difficult for someone to say that no temples were destroyed, no riots happened. The, there was no, I mean, in partition wasn't such a big trauma. People will stop, people will stop talking about such things in the future. People will be more careful towards the fundamental value that makes a society great. And that is the search for truth. Search for truth also needs to be made legal and also, uh, you know, made something which is 
a valued construct for every society, right? Now, I would like to end by saying that memory is all, the rise of memory is linked to the rise of a sense of freedom in the people, right? So that is what is happening right now in India. And I would say that memory studies uh, would lead to a set of laws which would come out of uh, the genuine aspirations of our people. They are not a hyper reality as some people might say, right? But something that will take care of the grief of our people, uh, our country that has remained dormant and has not and has not uh, a chance to express itself or has not uh, you know found a proper way uh, to be talked about and dealt with right as long as there are people who can deny the history of what happened to our country our children will not learn the true history of our country the laws and you know laws and history are closely interrelated in every country, our constitution, our uh, way of looking at things cannot be divorced from our history. We need to own up our history and we need to go ahead and say that history, our history needs to be made into a law so that it is not repeated again, right? So the law which was given to us in colonial times, a fragmented one, we need to change that and we need to base it on universal values that reflects the aspirations of our people. And only then I think we will be able to give the message to the world that we have left the trauma of slavery, the trauma of being under colonial rule, the trauma of uh, having been subdued and not be able to express ourselves, we have finally left behind. Memory laws, when introduced in India, to me, will represent that phase. And I really sincerely pray that that phase comes sooner than later for our great nation, for it to once again establish itself. So this is what I uh, wanted to share with all of you today. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'd be very glad to answer that. Uh, there is a question that any arguments that I have come across against memory laws, I already shared that. One is that uh, it will take away the, it will destroy, it will uh, destroy the freedom of speech, right? And those who do that very often do that with the argument that only if we are allowed to talk openly, shout loudly about an issue, can we go ahead and that's what freedom of speech means. Freedom of speech for such means, uh, for such people perhaps means a very uh, one dimensional, a very narrow concept. It does not mean debate. It does not include human dignity. It does not include the suffering that the people have gone through. For example, those who talked against memory laws, they talked about uh, that the trauma which may have happened for so many uh, Jews or gypsies or the world war, right? It is not so big that you can stop people from saying that it did not happen or that if academicians want to say that it uh, was something justifiable, nobody should be stopped, right? So in the name of academic freedom, a lot of abuses, a lot of uh, lies have taken place. And it is important to know that uh, not all academic uh, you know, freedoms actually lead to freedom of speech. Some actually lead to a bearing of human dignity and uh, uh, human suffering. Does historical denialism lead to a repeat of history? Of course, denial has been recognized as the most dangerous of all, uh, you know, things that lead to genocide. Uh, all theorists about genocide agree that if there's one cause that led to it, it was a denial. So it's important that we look at denial and laws help in preventing denial. Our debates, arguments can go only up to a point. Debates, arguments can only be between two people. 
but when laws are made it is when a society comes of age and tells itself that yes this is not something which is allowed anymore we have risen we have risen from those ashes we will not allow such a thing to happen uh, which stage of framing such laws are we now in we are right now in the conceptual stage this is something that you know people at large need to know that this is the way we need to go forward that not only we have to uh, discount not only we have to oppose the falsification of history in our country but we also have to formalize it end it with memory laws memory laws is the last stage of uh, when we have uh, changed the falsification of history we can change uh, in debates in our books in our textbooks we can teach the children the alternate reality which actually took place but we have to go beyond that also and the last stage of that is memory loss so that not only it puts a closure to this trauma but it also sees to it that it is not repeated that it is not something uh, that ever done again will india ever incorporate memory loss if yes when and how i believe we will i believe we are on the way to it there is a rising consciousness in our country about how powerful memory is how because if you see the ram janmabhoomi issue it is it it was memory versus history the historians of india put their entire weight on babri masjid on i would not even call it a mas- mandir versus masjid issue i would call said the entire the historians of india they went to great details in falsifying every bit of history around it right but they did not succeed what they came up was on, was about the memory of the people the memory of the indian people who said that there was a temple below that and it is a issue of justice it's the issue of justice that uh, there should be a temple and it is not just a issue of uh, masjid versus mosque so it was memory won over history memory wins over history every time history can be falsified not memory and in india today what we need is that strengthening of the memory so that it comes forward and it tells us that the memory that we had to deny because of the colonialism because of so many issues it can again take ascendance and show us the right path how many countries have me- uh, memory laws almost 30 uh, they are mostly european countries and uh, it is important that uh, it's this their uh, it's very interesting history if you read it they brought it in because they told themselves that we cannot go through a second world war again we cannot go through a denial of so many things that we did at such a mass level that uh, it led to the killings of murder of millions and millions of people so memory loss came in response to that awareness memory loss did not arise in a vacuum it is because large sections of society rose and woke uh, they woke up and said that we must create laws so that people like david irving so that people uh, like many other historians cannot get up and say that there were you know no uh, jews were killed in gas burners right the uh, the concentration camps did not exist right and uh, the f- the thing is that david irving went very far in uh, almost going to convince the world and if you read uh, the entire uh, history of uh, how it unfolded in the court the people had to uh, the people against her they had to go and build it bit by bit about why concentration camps existed so so many millions of people died was not enough it had to be made evidence it had to be made a proof so that those people who were denying it had to be stopped so truth falsification of truth is like that people who falsify truth go to an entire lens to see that it is not known and that is what we are facing in india today there has been a lot of falsification of truth about history and uh, it is important that we stop them from doing so so that the next generation does not go through that again 
So I would request all of you to go forward, read about it, and educate uh, the people around you. And uh, it is important for our survival. It is important for our uh, destiny. It is important for the future of our nation. That is uh, why memory laws are so important for us at this uh, juncture of time. If we do it now, we do it. Otherwise, it might take us a long time because it's very fragile. People are out to destroy it. Those who built up memory laws also faced a great deal of opposition, but they did it because they felt that it will help us, as I said, in three things. It will help us uh, to integrate the nation. It will help us to combat the different forces that are trying to fragment us. And it will create a safe and secure future for our children. So that was that's the need for memory laws, right? That is why memory laws have been brought about. And it is important that we start thinking along similar lines. Just debating, just putting blogs or articles will not be enough. We need to grow we need to go beyond that and think also in terms of legal terms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I have shared almost all the points. If there are any other questions, I would be very glad to uh, you know, share, otherwise we come to an end over here. This is the first time I talked about memory laws, and uh, I discussed it with uh, Manushi uh, Ji, my colleague and friend, and we felt that the time for it to share it has come, and we need to discuss that. We can do that again if, uh, you know, people want so, and we will do that probably in, you know, slightly more greater depth. I also want to say that I have talked about memory in my book, The Infidel Next Door. Uh, it is a book about memory and it is a book about uh, why we need memory laws in our country uh, because memory, as I uh, am repeating myself now, is uh, something that needs to be brought in into our consciousness, into our ways of thinking so that those who try to erase our history know that they cannot do so. Uh, how can general public help in framing such laws? One is by creating awareness. One is by studying about memory laws. I have uh, talked to many people, even many friends from legal fraternity. None of them know about memory laws. Oh, does it exist? That's what they ask me. What is the thing, brother? It Europe in Europe. और यूरोप के लोग ऐसा सोचते हैं तो हमारे देश में इन चीजों की क्या जरूरत है इतने सारे लॉस तो ऑलरेडी बने हुए हैं राइट लेकिन हम ये भूल जाते हैं कि लॉ बनाने का पर्पस एक होता है कि उससे जब भी कोई नया लॉ आता है जब भी कोई नई ऐसी चीज आती है उससे जो perpetrators hote hain jo kisi cheez ko chupane ki koshish karte hain people who try to hide something know that their days are numbered and they cannot do so anymore see that actually governs the spread of lies and when we make laws feel a accuracy itself and that is what we need to keep in mind so laws will only help us uh, memory laws will help us only to blast open, to destroy the secrecy that has hid and that also allows so many people to tell lies and get away with it. If we have a, if we have a law against, for example, say that RSS did not kill Gandhi, right? Will we be able to go ahead and keep on saying that RSS killed, murdered Gandhi? Can we do that? If, for example, this person knew that there, is, uh, there are memory laws in our country, would they be able to go ahead and say that the Sikh rights happens because Sikhs deserved it, right? We make wild allegations in our country and they cause pain and trauma to so many people, thousands and thousands. The number is not in uh, just uh, a few. So it is important that this pain and trauma which is caused, it causes a reverberation, it affects millions. And we are already a society in grief. Can we allow more grief to come in our society and uh, spread us more and more? No, I don't think so. 
I think we need to put a closure, we need to put an end to this, and that is why we need memory loss so much. So that is what I would like to say, and that is what I would like to ask all of you to think about it, read about it, and uh, let us carry and make this into a movement. Let us carry this forward. Thank you, Dhanyawad, and I hope that uh, you found the talk interesting and stimulating. Thank you very much.